Welcome to Pinoy Crossing for the basketball show for the Filipino community. My name is PJ. Joining me is Marky Mark with the scarf. Nice. That's in time because it's freaking cold outside. Match in Canada. And we got our special guest, my boy, straight from Brentford. Roll. JR Galarza, thank you for coming, man. Yeah, that's an amazing intro. I haven't had one of those since uh, university. Honestly, <laughs> 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 like when you know, I was 35. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to make it very homey as I can. But thank you for coming. Thank you for being oh, in the studio. Me. The last time we talked at, at Panoi Crossover, you were over Skype, and I think it was yeah. kind of laggy and stuff. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, it was I, I, literally the day, I think before or the week before, I was going to propose to my fiance. I told you, don't air it or don't, because <laughs> you had to cut that part out. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys did, so I appreciate yeah. that. But yeah. no, that's, that's funny, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so now you're in the flesh. Now we can talk face to face, get a lot of different stories we, could, we couldn't get from the Skype interview. Let's start off, Mark, with, I guess, JR. And seeing UP doing really well, yeah. like right yeah. now, talk about, I guess, for the kids that don't know, your basketball experience in the Philippines and, I guess, you guys in your life. Yeah, um, well, I mean, like many, I guess, Filipino kids, you know, I started playing basketball when I was very young. And, again, like very many Filipino kids, it was my dad that put the ball in my hands, right? So um, at the age of four, I was playing the house, uh, CYO House League, which is in Brantford. And which is crazy because my son, he just had a game yesterday for the same organization. So he's in his second year playing now and um, grew up playing that and played it um, on and off in Brantford for the, my rep OBAs and all that OBLs and all that stuff wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't out yet. Um, and there were some times where some years I would try out for different teams, uh, but pretty much I just grew up in Brantford, played basketball in Brantford. Um, and yeah, like back in that time, there was no real like basketball trainers or anything like that. So it's, it's crazy doing what I'm doing now for the community, but grew up playing ball there and pretty much literally the day after my high school graduation. So um, actually before that, were we in grade 10, grade 11? Yeah, grade 11, grade 10, something Grade 11. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, yeah, but yeah. me and uh, PJ here, um, yeah, we, we were on a basketball tour. Mm -hmm. Man, it was what was it, like 30 games in 35 yeah. days, something crazy like that. And a lot of us got scholarship offers. And, I um, didn't. It's still open. I thought you want to give It's still there. It was a default. Everyone gets a scholarship, but we really want those people. <laughs> it got lost. It got lost yeah. in the mail. It got yeah. lost in the mail. Yeah. Um, but no, it was, it was definitely like a life changing opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, I got recruited by two of the top three schools that my dad wanted. So my dad wanted for me, because I mean, we didn't know anything about those schools, but he wanted UP, Ateneo, and LaSalle, mainly because they were educational, education first type of schools, and they were worldly, worldly recognized. So hopefully it wouldn't, um, the whole translating the, the diploma and bringing it back here wouldn't be such a problem. Um, so, um, I got LaSalle and, and UP interested um, at the time UP wasn't wasn't the best and, and they were having a hard time with recruitment and, and financial um, woes LaSalle was recruiting semi heavily and then Ateneo they killed us so <laughs> they, they weren't really too interested in too many of our, our guys and they I think they won the high school division that, that year mm -hmm. too um, and then so they kept in touch so I was with LaSalle actually first uh, for a lot of people don't really know that but I was with DLSU from, all the way from like my high school recruitment to when I flew over to the, over to the Philippines for the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, day after my high school graduation, um, I had a plane ticket to, to go to, to the Philippines. My, my, mom went me, my mom went with me and she stayed with me for about two or three weeks um, to help me get situated and, and get all my papers in and all that. And literally, as soon as I got off the plane, it was training. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I think I... I had, I went right into the team A practice and then right back, right into the team B practice after the 24 hour journey wow. over there. Um, and for me, it was just personal. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show coach, like I'm, I'm here because I want to be here. I'm here because I want to, I want to play. I want to start now. Um, and yeah, and even, even they were already in like preseason off season type of training. So we had like workouts and, and everything the whole week. So I was doing like four day tra type of training things with the LSU as soon as I got off the plane. Um, and yeah, so I guess continuing the basketball journey from there um, after playing like been growing up my whole life in, in, in Canada uh, and going to the Philippines, 
after my first year of being in DLSU, uh, things didn't quite work out. Um, and I, I, was in a, I was in a situation where either I was going to come back home and, and continue my education here, or I was going to find another school that was going to um, have a diploma that was recognized in the Philippines or from the Philippines to here and, and try it out over there. So, um, yeah, um, I found myself at UP. They, mm. they opened their doors for me over there. Um, and four and a half years ish later, I graduated magna cum laude. I was a team captain of the basketball team over there. Um, there's this article, really popular article called spin.ph, mm -hmm. um, our news, news team over there. And I was rewarded student athlete of the year, uh, 2015. They actually, yeah. they actually <laughs> shipped over my like glass plaque and like the banner and stuff that I oh, want and certificates yeah. and all that. So it was really neat. Um, was that the article yeah. with the headband? You had the headband on, the white headband? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and um, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm just going to, like, leave it up to you guys yeah. to open up the questions for, for, <laughs> to fill in the gaps in between. Yeah. But, yeah, my life over there was, 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 was really cool. It was, it was fun. Yeah. But, I guess talk about, like, specifically yeah. being at UP, and I guess for the kids that want to or have the idea of playing basketball in the Philippines, talk about <clears> the type of comp competition you had to play against or the type of the teammates or the... The, the communication style in the Philippines and amongst your teammates, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm not even going to lie. Like, yeah. playing basketball in Brantford wasn't the best in terms of the, the culture, mm -hmm. cu the cultural basketball that I had here in Toronto and I had over there in the Philippines. I actually, like, I, I put a lot of credit for my basketball development into Toronto. Like, mm -hmm. um, I grew up playing with... Um, so many great Filipino basketball players and we were in like the whole, you know, the Nabas, the um, Mabuhay Cups, all those tournaments. And it's so ha I'm so happy to see that so, so strong right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually didn't understand the whole like, I didn't, I was, talk I was telling my athletes when I was, mm -hmm. uh, I was in a car ride with them and I was telling them like, I didn't, I didn't know why in Brantford. I was being kind of shunned for yelling and screaming like and one and let's go and I didn't know why I had to suppress these emotions until I came and played in Toronto and then when mm -hmm. I started playing in Toronto and I saw like 80% 90% of my teammates were all, were all like that I was like okay let's go so it's not just me right it's mm -hmm. like the Filipino and it's, it's the energy <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Intensity, yeah, and the passion. intensity and yeah. that's exactly how it is in the Philippines mm -hmm. right so the energy the, the passion the love for the game, whether you're in the stands, on the bench, or on the court, right? There's just, everyone has a mutual love for the game over there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely what I see so similar with, with basketball here and over there is just the, just the passion, the drive for it. Um, and if anything, it's intensif intensified over there because, the, man, the stadiums are crazy packed and it's, it's, it's amazing, right? Um, but in terms of, like, any other experiences that's, that really stands out that's different mm -hmm. um man it's just it's just a culture thing cultural thing right mm -hmm. here you can go to like a, an oua game or um a cis game and you might have a couple hundred maybe a thousand um live audience viewers and some of them aren't even there to to be loud they're just there to scout or they're just there to to watch or they're just your you know parents that or family members that haven't seen you in a while, mm -hmm. right? Over there, it's just everyone feels like they're close to you when they're on the court. Mm -hmm. And so they that's how, that's where yeah. the energy comes, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they might go to a different school, but they're, they're one of your fans um, with you being on the, on the team. They're going to rep your colors. They're going to, like, make a sign for you and, and whatever. It's just, mm -hmm. like, the spirit of the game is, is so big. I think what, what comes with that, too, is over there, like, every... Every game is played in like a big arena, in a big stadium, right? Those NBA Global games are played in the mm -hmm. same games that the college games are, or the university games are. Um, not every school doesn't have their own own gym, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just everyone pulls in together, and it's like my side against your side type of mm -hmm. thing. And it's it's really cool. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for I guess the last advice, like last question would be for kids out there that aspire to play right. to different schools, maybe in the Philippines or maybe uh, to U.S., what are some of your advice to kind of give them because you've went through kind of the same experience? Oh, man. Um, it's not easy. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's work. Um, you're going to find that there's going to come a point in your career, if it hasn't already, that basketball feels like work. It's mm -hmm. wake up, 
eat, train, go to class, study, maybe take a nap. Then you got basketball practice, maybe some film. Um, you got to stay back to do extra, go home, do homework, eat, shower, go to bed, do the same thing over mm -hmm. and over again. And I know a few of our guys that went, went on the Philippine tour, when that was presented to them, when that's, that's what they were told to, for the expectations, even though they had scholarship opportunities, they said, man, it was very mature of them, yeah. but they said, like, I, I just, I, could, I can't imagine myself doing this because I also want to be, I want to enjoy being a student. Right, and that's where the whole balance thing comes in. It's just a lot of balance, a lot of sacrifice, and man, it's it just takes a lot of mental and emotional toughness to get through it. Mm -hmm. Especially like you're not always gonna have a good game, you're not always gonna make uh, make your grades right, you're not always gonna um, have perfect test scores or whatever. So I guess my best advice for for any up and comer, any up and coming student athlete is just really know that you're getting in there to be a student athlete and not just a student in the classroom, mm -hmm. but a student of life. You know, mm -hmm. the whole college experience in itself, university experience in itself, having to learn how to balance everything, that is going to help grow and shape you to become like the grown up that you are going to become mm -hmm. after everything. Um, mm -hmm. I've taken everything I am as a student athlete in university to now as a businessman. Yeah. I, I feel that I'm able to balance everything in my life, stay up, for 20 hours of a day, sometimes 22 hours, just because I'm, I'm banging out ideas for my business. Um, because I was able to do that from my educational career in the mm -hmm. Philippines. Like I had to stay up and do, and, and do projects and study for exams mm. after three, four hours of training, right? Yeah. Because I had to. If I didn't stay up, then I wasn't ready or prepared. 